Hello there, my name is Alex Bennett. The following video about the history of Kendo is very broad and very simplified. Uh, there are so many theories that need to be gone into and to keep it brief, I had to sort of gloss over a lot of them. Now if you're interested in more of the history and more detail, may I suggest that you get my book, Kendo Culture of the Sword, published by uh, the University of California Press. This will give you a lot more information, perhaps to satisfy your curiosity. In the meantime, however, I hope that you enjoy the video. It is generally thought that distinct schools, or yuha, of martial systems appeared around the 14th century in Japan. Schools of swordsmanship evolved around this time based on artistic concepts and ideals of perfection that sought to train the samurai in practical combat techniques and also provide them with the psychological and spiritual strength to prevail in the throes of combat. The teaching methodology would usually revolve around man-to-man -man teaching of techniques by the master to his disciples, utilizing predetermined patterns of movement, or kata, oral teachings, or kuden, and later on in the Tokugawa period, written teachings, or densho, in the form of scrolls. These were often purposefully vague or elusive, to ensure trade secrets were not divulged to outsiders. Initially, there were three main traditions that subsequently provided the core teachings for many hundreds of offshoot schools. They are cited by many scholars as being the Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu, the Nen Ryu, and the Kage Ryu. Given the secretive and pseudo religious nature of these schools, Followers often asserted the divine beginnings of their new. Much tradition has been invented to enhance the reputation and perceived potency of the school's teachings, both technical and spiritual, and hence the standing of its students. By the mid to late 16th century, daimyo, or warlords, began to seek the tutelage of professional martial art instructors to train them and their men in military affairs. Individual warriors also sought skilled teachers to take them to new levels in their martial prowess and employability. This was a time when samurai would roam the countryside in search of opponents to test their skills and duels in a practice of errantry referred to as mushashugyo. They hoped to make a name for themselves as kengo, or master swordsman with no equal. Naturally, this was an extremely hazardous occupation but those who excelled and survived were able to create their own schools and gather many disciples. During the Tokugawa period, Japan enjoyed an era of relative peace. With no more major wars to fight, samurai warriors no longer had recourse to prove their mettle in battle. Society was structured with the samurai at the top and farmers, artisans and merchants positioned below them. Even so, samurai retained their status as professional warriors under the Tokugawa regime and were obligated to maintain military preparedness. Thus, specialist ryuha, or martial schools, proliferated during the 17th century, and by the 19th century, there were as many as six or seven hundred schools of kenjutsu, or swordsmanship, not to mention many other different martial arts as well. New schools developed novel and untested techniques, and cutter routines became ever more flamboyant and visually appealing, but removed from the realities of combat. Towards the end of the 17th century, there were few, if any, samurai still alive who had actually experienced war. A number of distinct trends could be witnessed in the martial arts in this period, particularly in swordsmanship. These included intellectualization, spiritualization and pacification, commercialization, and finally, sportification. The highly ostentatious and unpractical nature of many of the Pax Tokugawa Kenjutsu schools and their dynamic kata 
drew the scorn of some contemporary warriors and scholars. As the Confucian scholar Ogyu Sorai put it, All swordsmanship of today is almost entirely the creation of people living in a time of peace. They make great display of their strikes and place some primary emphasis on winning in a spectacular fashion. Some samurai teaching the art today do quite well for themselves and debate lofty theories. Other samurai concentrate on perfecting their choreography and gesture. To remedy this trend, which was known as kaho kempo, or flowery sword techniques, and to overcome other perceived limitations of training only in kata, an initiative of full contact training, known as shinai uchikomi geko, using bamboo swords, or shinai, and protective equipment, was developed during the Shotoku era, that's around about 1711 through to 1716, and thereafter. Men associated with this development included Naganuma Shirazaemon Kunisato of the Jikishin Kageryu and Nakanishi Chuzo Tsugutake of the Ittoryu. Besides using shinai, contact fences also wore protective equipment, which is today called bogu or kendogu, which meant that they could engage in unrestricted relays of striking without fear of injury or injuring. This formed the precursor to the modern art of kendo. After two centuries of self-imposed national isolation, or sakoku, kenjutsu was rich in ritualistic symbolism and spiritualism, but from a practical standpoint, it was no match for the firearm technology that had been evolving in the West. Following the Meiji Restoration of 1868, the imperial government sought to revolutionize its military by drawing heavily on military technology from the West and the Western systems. Traditional martial arts quickly fell into decline due to the lack of perceived application for a nation desperately trying to modernize. But for the efforts of one man, Sakakibara Kenkichi, Kenjutsu might have disappeared altogether. Sakakibara was a direct retainer, or hatamoto, of the Tokugawa shogunate, and an accomplished swordsman of the Jikishin Kageryu school. He also taught Kenjutsu at the Kobusho, the military academy created by the Tokugawa Bakufu in 1856. Lamenting the sudden decline of Kenjutsu, he resolved to rekindle interest and provided a means of income for the destitute martial artists who knew nothing else. He achieved this by establishing public fencing demonstrations known as Gekiken Kogyo. The first was held in the Asakusa district in Tokyo. It started on April 11, 1873 and lasted for 10 days. Members of the public paid an entrance fee to witness swordsmen demonstrating their skills in exciting bouts, and the takings were divided among the fighters. The instant and almost unbridled popularity encouraged a flurry of similar events throughout the country. Before long, the media began to criticize the events as shameful exploitation of once indelible samurai honor and pride. The government also became weary, as the venues were thought to be gathering places for disgruntled former samurai to meet and hatch seditious plans against the new imperial government. Eventually, Gekken Kogyo meets were outlawed, but they did ensure enough interest for martial arts to continue to the next stage of development, this time in the police force and in the education system. Many of the highest ranking kendo exponents in Japan today have some connection with the police. The relationship between the police force and kendo goes right back to the initial stages of the police system's development in modern Japan. The first police commissioner, Kawaji Toshiyoshi, had developed great respect for the Batto Tai division who armed only with swords, had performed magnificently in the Battle of Tabaruzaka against Saigo Takamori's rebels. He subsequently rediscovered the true value and potential of traditional martial arts, in particular Kenjutsu. 
Before making a trip to inspect police forces overseas in 1879, he published his thoughts in an essay and touted the value of the traditional martial arts for the new police force. On January 19, 1880, newly formed Tokyo Police Academy guidelines stipulated that cadets be instructed in Kenjutsu and Jujutsu, which meant that the stars of the Gekken Kogyo shows soon found gainful employment with the police as instructors. Although the utilization of Kenjutsu by the police and the armed forces was thereby redefined, the road to get it accepted into the public school curriculum was long and full of twists and turns. During the 1870s, there were a number of high-ranking government officials who questioned why it was not possible to develop a physical education curriculum for Japanese schools that was based on traditional Japanese physical culture, in other words, the martial arts, rather than Anglo-American sports, German gymnastics, or Swedish calisthenics. One of the most famous and influential supporters of this line of thought was judo founder Kano Jigoro. The Ministry of Education was guarded about introducing martial arts into the curriculum, and a number of surveys were implemented to ascertain any potential benefits or hazards. The most notable of these was the 1883 evaluation conducted by the National Institute of Gymnastics, and the 1896 evaluation made by the School Health Advisory Board. The conclusion reached in these investigations was that the teaching of Kenjutsu and Jujutsu would indeed complement the academic syllabus with their emphasis on spiritual or moral development and physical exercise. However, the perceived potential problems outweighed the benefits, and it was even suggested that in the case of Kenjutsu, repeated striking of the head could result in brain damage in schoolchildren. The debate continued until 1911, when the Minister of Education promulgated physical education guidelines which said that Kenjutsu and Jujutsu could be taught as a subject for boys over the age of 16 who were in good health. This regulation came into effect from 1913. The formation of the Dainippon Budokukai, or the Greater Japan Society of Martial Virtue in 1895, was a significant factor in the promotion of Kenjutsu in schools, and indeed in the community at large. In 1905, the Butokukai established a division to train Bujutsu instructors. And after a number of revisions to the education system, this school became known as the Bujutsu Semmongakko, or the Bujutsu Vocational School in 1912. In 1919, the school's headmaster, Nishi Kubo Hiromichi, officially replaced the old name for martial arts, that is Bujutsu, with Budo, which literally means martial way. With these changes, the school was renamed to the Budo Semmongakko, this was to emphasize the martial way, or do, in other words, the spiritual and educational aspects of Japan's traditional martial culture. From this time, the Budo Semmon Gakko and the Tokyo Higher Normal School were the two prominent schools tasked with training young martial arts instructors for placement in schools throughout the country. It was also from this time on that the terms Gekiken and Kenjutsu were replaced with Kendo, and Jujutsu became Judo, Kyujutsu became Kyudo, and so on. Still, there were other problems that needed to be overcome. This included developing group instruction methods and creating a unified style of Kendo that transcended affiliation to a specific Ryuha. The Butokukai and the Tokyo Higher Normal School and the Ministry of Education set up a committee to develop a set of kata which would enable effective and unified dissemination nationwide. The five kendo masters from various ryuha tasked with this responsibility were Negishi Shingoro, Tsuji Shinpei, Naito Takaharu, Monna Tadashi, and Takano Sasaburo. In 1912, 
they presented the Dai Nippon Teikoku Kendo Kata, or the Greater Japan Imperial Kendo Kata, which consisted of seven kata of Tachi versus Tachi, that's long sword versus long sword, and three kata of Tachi versus Kodachi, or short sword. There were numerous changes and amendments made to the original version in the following years, but it essentially constituted what modern exponents of kendo still practice today as the Nihon Kendo Kata. These kata contributed greatly to the spread of kendo and provided the means to teach a standardized style of kendo in the schools throughout the country. Kendo was eventually made a compulsory subject in Japanese schools in the 1930s. It was during the 1930s that Japan embarked on a course of imperial expansion in East Asia and school regulations and education was changed to encourage a militaristic spirit. Specifically, kendo and judo were elevated to compulsory subjects for boys because they were, quote, useful in nurturing a resolute, determined patriotic spirit and training both the mind and body. Increasingly militaristic ideology became the norm throughout the 1930s and in the spring of 1941, the term physical education, or taiso, was changed to physical discipline, or tairen. The Botokukai was placed under direct government auspices in March 1942, and with combat application in mind, school kendo training soon reached its peak in terms of violence. For example, as opposed to the standard method of the best of three points, kendo bouts were made ippon shobu, where the first to score a valid kill was deemed the winner. Tripping the opponent up or ripping off their fencing mask constituted a valid point, in other words decapitation, and shinai were shortened to the length of military issue swords. After Japan's defeat in the Second World War, martial arts were banned by the occupation forces because of the role that they played in the installation of nationalistic fervour in youth. In October 1946, the Budokukai was dissolved on the grounds of perpetuation of militarism or a martial spirit. The sound of bamboo shinai clashing amid Kiai screams was rarely heard immediately after the war. This was because it was illegal. Nevertheless, plenty of enthusiasts manoeuvred to legalise kendo again, and in May 1948, a fencing and kendo demonstration was held in Tokyo, in front of officers from GHQ. The following year, the Tokyo Collegiate Kendo Federation Alumni Association was permitted to form the Tokyo Kendo Club. These enthusiasts set about reviving kendo as a sport suitable for a post-war democratic society, and the result was what they called Shinai Kyogi, or literally, Pliant Staff Sport. As the name suggests, the sporting aspect of kendo was stressed, and the combative features from before and during the war were consciously removed. The protective equipment resembled that of western fencing and was produced with cost effectiveness in mind. Practitioners did not wear traditional keikogi or hakama, but shirts and trousers. Matches were conducted in a court area, which was different to pre-war kendo, and a time limit was instigated in which the player who scored the most points by the end was deemed the victor. There were also penalties given for foul play, no body clashes were permitted, and the utterance of anything more than a grunt was prohibited. The All Japan Shinai Kyogi Association was inaugurated in 1950, and in 1952, the hybrid sport was included as an elective subject in junior high and high schools. The All Japan Kendo Federation was formed in the same year, and conventional kendo was revived, albeit in a significantly tamer form than the war years. Shinai Kyogi and kendo coexisted temporarily, but in 1957 the two were combined to become Gakko Kendo, or school kendo, after which the All Japan Shinai Kyogi Association became a part of the All Japan Kendo Federation. In other words, it was dissolved. 
The first All Japan Kendo Championships were conducted in 1953, following the inauguration of the All Japan Kendo Federation in October 1952. Kendo was featured as a demonstration sport during the Tokyo Olympics of 1964. The matches took place at the newly constructed Budokan. Kendo was gradually resurrected in the national school curriculum, along with other martial arts such as Judo and Sumo and Naginata, which was primarily studied by girls. Kendo experienced a boom of sorts from the mid-1960s, and the popularity of competition kendo ignited an ongoing heated debate on whether kendo is budo or sport, often without a suitable definition for either. In any case, emphasis on winning competitions through trickery or unconventional techniques was and is widely criticised by conservative authorities as contradicting the essence of kendo as a way for personal development. It was with this in mind that the All Japan Kendo Federation decided to put on paper what kendo was ideally supposed to be. In 1975, they created the official concept of kendo and purpose for practicing. The concept of kendo is to discipline the human character through the application of the principles of the sword. The purpose of practicing kendo is to mold the mind and body, to cultivate a vigorous spirit, and through correct and rigorous training, to strive for improvement in the art of kendo, to hold in esteem human courtesy and honor, to associate with others with sincerity, and to forever pursue the cultivation of the self. This will make one be able to love his or her country and society, to contribute to the development of culture and to promote peace and prosperity among all peoples. The international spread of Kendo has come in waves over the last century, with its most accelerated proliferation occurring during the 1970s and 1980s onwards. The actual number of international Kendo practitioners pales in comparison to other martial arts such as Judo and Karate. Nevertheless, the International Kendo Federation is constantly expanding. Originally established in 1970, the International Kendo Federation now has over 60 affiliated countries. The art has also currently been practiced in numerous non-affiliated countries as well. Refinements are continually made to match rules, concepts, techniques and equipment. The idea is to facilitate Kendo's continued integration and acceptance as a socially useful and fulfilling activity, not only as a sport, but also as a way of life. In this sense, Kendo continues to combine characteristics of martial arts, combative sports and is an exercise in seeking self-perfection. Thank you.